Of course, there was in Suez in 56 and the war of Algeria, but in 62, the Algerian war was over and Abdel Nasser wants to improve his relations with France. And then he thought that if there is an interview with Le Monde, this will really have a great impact. And uh, even if Rerik Krulo was criticizing some of the actions of the government of Abdel Nasser, in general, he was supporting the national independence and the foreign policy, the Egyptian foreign policy. So there was an invitation, and Eric said, yes, OK, I can come, but I have some problems with the Abdel Nasser policy, especially that the communists are in prison. They said, no problem. The book actually discusses this in details. I'm not going to say a lot, but this was a start of a special relation with Abdel Nasser for seven years, seven years of, and then it played a role not only in the relation between Egypt and France, but it opened uh, channels for uh, ridiculous law in all the Arab world because it was difficult for any leader in the Arab world to say we don't want to law. And Abdel Nasser already had made an interview with him. So it was difficult for any Arab leader to refuse meeting him. Lahdar spoke a lot about 67 uh, war of 1967. I want to say something because he played a basic role, primary role in changing the European uh, public opinion in 1960 it was clear and this was strange because uh, the this was the situation of General de Gaulle who was the head of the state from the Arab uh, Israeli Arab conflict was actually a positive stand but in the field of politics apart from the Communist Party that what as that time was a great power all the media all political parties with Israel hundred percent there were no question about Israel policy. And nobody knew what happened to the Palestinian in 47. And for years after 1967, Eric Rollo's article specifically that he went to the occupied territories and he spoke about the occupation and he spoke about Palestine in 48, and he spoke about the setback and Naksa, and then he played a basic role, not only politically, but in the French public opinion. And not only the French public opinion, but the European public opinion, because Eric's articles were read by everyone, at least in Europe. and in the United States of America. I think that Eric Rollo's role enabled Europe and France to actually to come up with a point of view that, like we, the Western, we have to speak about the Arabs and we know what they are doing. No, he went and he used to meet the people, meet the officials, and he was from the first people who who met Yasser Arafat, and till the end he had special strong relations with Yasser Arafat and Palestinian Liberation Movement. Also, uh, he, this played a role, and even he can under we can make us understand the problems at times. It would be difficult that the European public opinion would understand what's happening. Since the Arab Spring revolutions, there was an actually an idea in the diplomatic media and political media in France and in Europe as well that Palestinian cause is actually is a simple cause. Like there are like tens of victims in Syria, 200,000 in two years. So Eric Rollo understood that the Palestinian cause was a basic issue till we understand what's happening in the Middle East. It's a symbol, not only an issue or a cause. Palestine actually does not have any geostrategic weight, no petroleum, nothing. But all the nations in the Arab world and for all the nations in the Islamic world as well, for them, this is a symbolic case for 
for the Western policies in the region, that from one side we have we have to uh, uh, try to uh, determine uh, right to self-determination, human rights, but when they come to the Palestinian issue, nobody cares about it. On Palestine, we cannot implement a simple thing. People, at times, people might say the Palestinian-Israeli issue is very difficult. No, it's not, because it's, it is a right to self-determination. Even uh, there is an international agreement that we have to build a Palestinian uh, state uh, in uh, West Bank and Jerusalem. At least if the Western countries wanted that, if that is possible, we have to say that we, ha on whom we wet pressure, on those who reject this agreement. And the only people who reject this uh, agreement is the Israeli people. I was in the TV one day ago on discussing what's happening on the ground in Palestine, and I said if the youth in the Arab world, is see, when they see what's happening in, in Palestine, tens of them will go to uh, ISIS. Because what they will do, we don't have any possibility, we don't have any capability. The Arab countries today, they don't they don't care about the Palestinian cause. So the only one who can fight against uh, imperialism and United States are uh, the ISIS. Any case, anyway, understanding this cause, the Palestinian issue, or the Palestinian cause was the most important things that Eric Rouleau did in France. François Mitterrand when he sent him to be uh, an ambassador at Tunisia, he was also a, a minister to the Palestinian Liberation Organization because in 1983 it was there and it was actually expelled from Beirut and, and it was in Tunisia. At the end, we cannot say all what's in the book, and the book is only a small part of the history of Eric Rouleau. Eric Rouleau actually was the one who wrote about the Iran Iranian revolution, and since uh, 78, 79, 80, 81, he used to go there to meet everybody, Khomeini, Bani Sadr, and he wrote a lot of articles about them. And maybe the coming step is to publish some of those articles that really had great importance in in the French public opinion. At the end, I would like to return to what I said at the beginning. That it's important that this actually forum would be a step so that Eric Rollo's role would be known in the history, specifically in the Egyptian history. When Eric Rollo died, there was actually a, came a letter from Yasser Arafat. In Egypt, unfortunately, I'm sorry, Abu Mazen. Abu Mazen, I'm sorry. And he was a known personality in Palestine. But it's also it's important that among the Egyptian people and the intellectuals and the journalists to actually to recognize his role and his different identity, because were he Egyptian, Jew, French, but at the end, he was with the Egyptian people and with the Arab nations, and thank you. Well, thank you very much, both. Uh, from what we read from the book and from what we hear from you both, uh, Masr, Egypt, and, uh, and Palestine is actually at the core of this Proche-Orient. 
uh, well, obviously. And we have here one of very good and close friends of uh, Eric Rouleau, Mr. Mohamed Fayek. Would you like to come and say two words, a few words on Eric Rouleau, please? I just arrived from Mexico and I came specifically. I was supposed to take one day rest in Europe, but actually I took the whole trip very fast in order to be able to catch up this important occasion. I didn't know that I was going to speak, but just uh, this uh, uh, honoring the memory of Eric Rollo for me is something very important. I had to come. I knew that Eric Rillo passed away actually late. I didn't know when he passed away. Maybe because I was away, I was traveling, and I don't know the exact reason, because if I, if I knew for sure I would have attended his, his funeral. As much as the pain and grief that we felt when, Eric, my, when my dear friend Eric Rollo passed away, as much as I felt great comfort today that we all feel when we are honoring his name, he deserves this appreciation with honor and that this appreciation would come from Cairo, the place that he loved most. And I witness from a close relationship with him, which started with an official relationship when I was a minister of information. And then, and then he was a journalist, an extinguished uh, journalist in Le Monde, in an important country for Egypt, which was France. Actually, we, our friendship got stronger. Uh, and we had a personal relationship that lasted till he passed away. And I witnessed that he was a true friend of Egypt at the time of hardship. Through And this was demonstrated through his ability to know the truth and analyze it and transfer, convey it with actually professionalism and sticking to professional standards. At that time, the Western media was happening with the Egyptian defeat and actually was faking a lot of the truth. At that time, Eric Rollo was one of the media pillars that we depended on. And at that time, I was a minister of information. So the role that Eric Rollo played, as uh, my colleague said, was very important in changing the public opinion, especially in France. After 1967, specifically in France, there was a care from Abdel, great concern uh, from, the, from Abdel Nasser to France because our relation with the West was bad. And France had an independent policy to a certain extent. And having a great person like de Gaulle, uh, President de Gaulle, the, the France cared a lot. There was a concern about France. Even when Libya came to take aeroplane, uh, aeroplanes, this was the suggestion from Abdel Nasser to take the Mirage aeroplanes from France. And this was one of the reasons to uh, foster strong, uh, friendly relations with France. Eric Rillo's relation was close with the social and intellectual Egyptian power because of his origin and his residence and uh, journalistic tasks that uh, gives him a chance to understand the needs of the reality, the, the needs of the political reality or the political uh, uh, education in Egypt. And we knew how uh, he had close connection with all the po policy makers in France and Europe in general. Uh, specifically, in an important aspect that was not clear for us, which was uh, the actually the uh, or European socialist, especially, and uh, their stand from the Zionist movement. We did not actually understand this movement. Whereas the leftist, Egyptian leftism and our uh, modern institutions had a vision and Rouleau's vision and advices and information was very useful for us at that time. Rouleau 
was really had a ha big mind and understood the value of personalities and Abdel Nasser and uh, the socialist movement. Um, the socialist movement in general and the democratic and the leftist and his relation with the educated personnel in Egypt, like Al Ahram Institution, for instance, and some uh, leftist uh, journals and intellectuals and, and also persons who were close to Abdel Nasser. And all this made him see the ability of actually making his relation very as much as very strong north of the Mediterranean because he wanted it to, there, there should be peace and he believed in democracy and peace and from there he saw it was it was important that that uh, he, uh, the importance of the Palestinian issue and he called and contacted the, the leaders with the same logic. I was sure that in the last months he was very angry about what was happening in Palestine and what was happening in Gaza Strip specifically. Abdel Nasser actually was actually uh, getting closer to one of international personnel and the journalists and intellectuals which formed one of, of his intellectual sources. Uh, because he was always uh, contacting such people. Eric Rollo was one of those people who was prominent in that place. He was as well. There were also other personalities that he, like Bremakov. Bremakov at that time was a representative of Bravda in Egypt, and I was the Minister of Information. And those personalities or those figures really was were very useful because the media at that time, they were not the media as it is nowadays, that that you can know through uh, w uh, internet and uh, the satellite channels. But big, uh, prominent journalists like Eric Rollo, they there were great dependence on them, and in the, uh, whether in the places they work on or even with the politicians, they had their weight. They had really great weight. As David Hurst. He used to come to Cairo always and others, other writers. But the relation between Abdel Nasser and Rollo had special nature in uh, because of he, unders he understood the, the Jewish uh, movement and the dimension of the Zionist movement and the risk of the conflict in the Arab zone on the development of the region was very, very important for the Mediterranean countries, which really made Rollo worried and where it was of interest uh, for Abdel Nasser at the same time. I don't want to take a lot of time, specifically after what we heard from my dear brother al akhdar Ibrahimi and Alan. But I can say that Eric Rollo was one of the rare personalities that was, is rare to find nowadays. And he left visions and opinions and ideas what make his soul to be immortal. So. Uh, a salute for the spirit of this beautiful person who lived close to our hearts and his memory will always live in this place in Cairo. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, unfortunately, our last speaker, Naif Hawetme, was not able to come, but he sent a text. And I would like to invite uh, Salwa Bakr, uh, to the podium to read the text, and then we will open the floor for discussion and questions if you want. Uh, Salwa? Yes. Thank you, Salahir. I'm honored to read the word of Mr. Naif Hawatma because I was I had the honor to join the Palestinian resistance in Beirut in 1982. 
and I witnessed with my own eyes the Israeli aggression on Lebanon and the the Israeli blockade on Lebanon and the Palestinian resistance came to uh, to life uh, to life from uh, Lebanon. I think uh, a Tanani publishing house because it issued and it published, it made the Arabic translation of those important memories. At, at, at the time, the outbreak of the Palestinian, the third Palestinian uprising. And at a time, what's happening from actually the displacement and, and dispersing on this displacement of the Syrian people and the sons of Syria, as we all know. Maybe those important memories and diaries would actually remind those who were, who had Alzheimer's, political Alzheimer's, and for those who wish that uh, the Arab uh, memory would forget the struggle and the fight and resistance for the worst colonialist wave on the Arab region currently, nowadays. So let's go to what Mr. Hawatmi said. Eric Rollo. Eric Rollo and the cases of national revelation actually behind the scenes of, scenes of the Middle East and the Third World, or Naif Hawatma, Secretary General of the Democratic Front for the Liberation of Palestine. We uh, long live those who struggled uh, for having the liberation because life is a long journey of liberation. Eric Rouleau, my friend, we celebrate that your diaries is, is translated in Arabic in actually the Near East behind the scenes in 2012, a life testimony on the history of the Arab region and the Middle East and your Palestinian book from war to war which is translated from the Arabic language uh, to Arabic language from the French in 1989. The moment I received the invitation to this forum, I remembered immediately uh, what, uh, the discussions and the talks with Rollo for tens of years. I thank my dear friend Alan Gresh and the institutions and those sponsors who invited us in this meeting in Egypt and which is hosted by the AUC. We, the nations of the third world, we are living in the heart of the national liberation movement uh, to determine our destiny since the beginning of the 19th century till our day. The beginning of the 21st century, the national liberation cases from the historic degradation, despotism and dict dictatorship and the homogeneity and the imperialism and the apartheid and the uh, colonialism and the religious sectorial fights and actually dividing, dispersing of the third world, the absence of freedoms and democracy, the absence of religious reform in the Ministry of Education and textbooks, the absence of social justice, and from here the explosion of uprising of nations and peoples that is not complete in so many countries in the Middle East and the third world countries. The despotic systems did not stop about having uh, the ha the uh, uh, about uh, actually attacking a nation who want freedom, civil state, the citizenship without discrimination as relation to religion uh, and between the man and the woman. And thus, the alternative was the political Islam, which was shedding blood, and whereas uh, the and actually making the political take a religious pretext. We see the sectarian fights, the bloody barbarous fights, the terrorism of ISIS, and the radicalism of this religion or that, and the roots of uh, ISIS in the textbook in the Arab countries. The 
issues and cases of causes of the Palestinian period and the f conflict of the Arab-Palestinian issue is the central issue of our Palestinian people and all the Arabs, peoples and nations, and today a big international issue in the whole world. This is what I'm aware of. This is what he realized and he felt and he invited to in his books and his writings as a life testimony to history and about the history of the Middle East since the beginning of the 20th century, specifically since the decision of dividing uh, Palestine in 1947 till uh, the left in 2012. Uh, a departure was sad and with all what was seen, Rollo lived and talked about the Middle East issues and the third world issues. He struggled. Uh, he was politician, Democrat, uh, advanced. He was actually meeting with all the leaders of the world. And he was working on Mohammed Masada, Abdel Nasser, Al Jazeera, Algeria, Nohru, Sukarno, Tito, Mandela, Palestine, uh, the National Liberation Movement and sell right to self-determination and their leadership, his investigation, Israel, Iran, Turkey, the Liber National Liberation Movement, the Arab one in Asia, Africa, Latin America. Rollo is writing from his side what what was actually uh, nobody uh, was actually what, what the people with the purpose of actually making the third world leaders be like Satan's who was actually uh, trying to challenging the imperialism. The leaders of the July revolution uh, uh, got rid of the king and uh, the owners of the real estate he disintegrated those of power, of industrial power, and the British and the French and others. And by nationalizing Suez Canal, the symbol of the control of the foreign grip on the Nile Valley and building the high dam. And also he established friendly relation with the Soviet Union, which is actually uh, have, was good relation, which is equal to the weight of the American side. I thought that the decision of Washington in 1956 by depriving the uh, project of the high dam from any money and technical assistance was a very low and mean decision to penalize Abdel Nasser to conclude uh, a weapons and arms uh, contract with Moscow. And this is justified. Th this is represented that USA refused to support Egypt with weapons. Uh, nationalizing Suez Canal was a great evidence at that time. And revolutionary, this was the second of its type in the Middle East after the nationalization which was that was aborting the Iranian petroleum, which was done by Mohammed Masada. Which was, abort, which was aborting Iranian petrol, which Mohammed uh, Masada did, those uh, moderate person who did in 1952, and uh, ousting him in 1953 through a coup d'etat which was prepared by the uh, CIA. Three months after the nationalization of Suez Canal, till the Israeli tanks spread inside the Egyptian Sinai, whereas the French fleets went to Port Said uh, for, and the reason of the three ally, uh, coalition is to get rid of Nasser, let alone the aspiration of Israel to enjoy the freedom of nav navigation in Suez Canal and to put its hand in Sinai, their hand on Sinai. In spite of the resistance, armed resistance of Egypt, those uh, actually colonialists did not stop, the, whereas Eisenhower thought that there should be actually a calming down of the situation, and all the foreign forces withdrew, and this was done, but Bolganin uh, missiles the head of the Soviet Union with the military in intervention, which is an initiative that shows that Moscow was supporting the developing countries. And here, Rulo st stood with the rev uh, revolution of the Algerian people and the revolution of the south of Yemen with the right of the Palestinian people to fight and had the right to self-determination. In his book, Palestinian from War to War, he wrote a chapter from the initiative of the Liberation Front, the program of the Ten Point, which is a national program presented by the Democratic Front in June 1974 and adopted by the Palestinian Council by unanimity to have uh, having uh, uh, an equal policy with Israel based on international legitimacy for the right to self-determination for the Palestinian people and the establishment of independent uh, Palestinian 
Palestinian state uh, in uh, according to the board uh, the what is stated in 67 and having a rightful solution for the rights of the refugees 194 and the right of the Palestinian liberation movement as the legitimate representative of the Palestinian people and the two countries would live side by side in peace and with a full comprehensive dialogue with all Palestinian brackets and the components it was a unified program for all the Palestinian people and its forces and national brackets and the National Palestinian Council voted on it by unanimity in uh, July 74 until our current days. In 29 November 2012, the General, UN General Assembly took a resolution to, uh, to admit the Palestinian state for July uh, 67 and the capital uh, and the right of refugees according to the decision 190 with the uh, uh, vote of one uh, a lot of countries and Israel voted against this decision Canada United States Czechoslovakia and six countries from the uh, Pacific in the West I'm sorry because the handwriting is not clear among which Rollo was accused of having, uh, was actually taking side of the systems in the third world countries in spite that he was criticizing for the uh, oppression of freedom and the absence of democracy in some countries where he had uh, talks with uh, heads. The government of Israel condemned his writing and con Menachem Begin, the prime minister, considered him to be an Egyptian ally, whereas Rollo got used uh, to quote from his Egyptian Jew, uh, uh, Shahad. Harun, I am a Jew when the Jews are oppressed. I am Palestinian when the Palestinians are oppressed. I am a Negro when the Negroes are oppressed. Rollo, the educated and the authority in the third world. Rollo built his relations with the Lib National Liberation Movement with the leaders of the Middle East and the third world countries on a, criti on a complicated uh, critical pace. He stood next to the history in addition to the transitional changes in history to liberate nations and people from historical degradation and the imperial 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 homogeneity and racism and the colonialism and to have equal uh, equality in citizenship and building the modern state which was the other face of the equal and the criticism that was written for all forms of oppression and torture and actually uh, obs uh, and uh, trespassing the liberty freedom of expression of opinion, freedom of having a way of thinking and political uh, rollo from the critic and from the side of critic and his background, which is the social and political background he called. It, I'm about to finish. He actually invited the critical mind to criticize in torturing uh, the uh, trends of the ruling authority towards the other opinion in the Middle East country and the third world countries, starting from Egypt, his original country, and actually that his friend Farid Haddad, the doctor of the poor, and the martyr Shohdi Atiyah al-Shahdi, the intellectual and the struggler, he, wrote, he put them as a model in Egypt, 23 July 1952, and what's after? and the martyrs in Africa, and this is against the suppression of freedom, against assassination and torture in the jails in the Middle East and the third world countries. And for sure, Le Monde Diplomatique, that were defending liberties and was sympathizing with the third world countries, gave enough independent space about the authorities of the third world countries where Rollo actually wrote wonderful things in his articles and his criticism. Rollo, the intellectual, he was an ambassador in the authority during the time of the socialist president Mitran. He was hired as an ambassador in Tunisia and the PLO and then in Turkey between 1988 and 19. 91. Uh, at th this period of time was referred to several times in, in this event, so please don't let me, uh, I'm go not going to read it. At the end, he, Mr. Hawatma say, Eric Rollo, uh, I am telling you 
you have done all the right things, all your revolutionary action does not die. The freedoms, liberty, development, and social justice is the path of history. You have lived and talked with history, and you wrote a lot of things with history, so history stood by you. Uh, long live you, my dear friends, who struggled a lot and who enlightened the people. And for we look, and here he finished the paper. I want to say something because I am a writer, an Egyptian writer. I hope that the press syndicate would uh, would make an award on the name, holding the name of Eric Rollo. This journalist who was really very conscious person and who was a person who was writing who was a great writer and he will not have a nobel prize that that was given to a writer all what she had is that actually she is going getting along with the policies and interest of those who are giving this prize and i hope that the egyptian ministry of culture and the general authority for a book fair headed by His Excellency, an enlightened minister, an educated minister, Mr. Helmi Nimnim. I hope that this book would be published with the publications in the family uh, library so that it would be available for uh, and have wide readership in Egypt. And thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Sauerbacher. Well, now I would like to open the floor for questions or comments. I'm sure we, there are other friends of Eric Rouleau in the audience, so please, yes. So I, we just need microphone. Yes, Amira. So. I'm a name Mohammed Khalil, a Sahafi Mosri. أنا في الحقيقة يعني بداية أنا بطلب من الأستاذ مصطفى الناشر أن هو يعمل إعادة يعني إعادة لونش للكتاب في نقابة الصحفيين لأن أعلم أن الكثير من الصحفيين الشباب ومن وفي بعض المصريين كثير من المصريين لا يعرفون عن إيريك لورو فهتكون دي مناسبة كبيرة أو كويسة أن احنا نعيد تعريف هذا الرجل للشعب المصري ثانيا يعني بشكركم يعني على الكلمات الطيبه لايريك والروح ونتمنى لكم التوفيق دائما ثانك يو كان وي تيك تو ثري كويشنز اند ذن انسرز يس هير عايز اقول ان الاستاذ ايريك رولو كان في 2009 كان عضوا في لجنه راسل لمن اجل فلسطين وبيحاول من خلالها الضغط من خلال الرأي العام العالمي على الأمم المتحدة من أجل أن تنهي مسألة حصانة إسرائيل واحتلالها للأراضي الفلسطينية بقي أن أقول أن إيريك رولو كان محل ثقة الرئيس الفرنسي الاشتراكي مترا فأرسله في مهمة غير رسمية إلى القذافي لإقناعه بالانسحاب من تشاد والوحيد في العالم اللي قدر يقنع فعلا القذافي بان يسحب قواته ولذلك كافأوا متراء وعينوا سفيرا في تونس وكلفوا بمهمه رسميه اخطر وهي التفاوض مع الايرانيين للافراج عن الرهائن الفرنسيين في لبنان ولكن المهمه فشلت بسبب تنافس فرنسي داخلي عشية انتخابات تشريعية سنة 86 أدت إلى إفشال فاس فيها اليمين الفرنسي وأفشل فيها مهمة رولو وتشكلت بعديها حكومة مساكنة ما بين جاك شيراك الديجولي Uh, were the winners, uh, but uh, the, fr uh, the problem was that Chirac uh, didn't like Rouleau and he had to be uh, uh, let go from his post as an ambassador as to, at Tunisia. And uh, he insisted that at f on his first visit to Tunisia, Rouleau shouldn't have been there. But Rouleau uh, is uh, present in the conscience of all uh, progressives uh, 
uh, and uh, socialists in the work uh, because uh, uh, in the world because of his work in all parts of the world. Thank you. A question from a question from Mr. Hani. My question to Alain Gresh. First, I'd like to ask you to give us uh, a bit of an idea about Eric Roulon, not just uh, from a Middle Eastern perspective, but from a French perspective. I think, I, I would assume that Eric Roulon, who believed in the liberation causes of the Third wor World, his life was just a series of disappointments because he saw uh, what, uh, uh, how uh, uh, the liberation movements turned into a monster that destroyed the dream at the very end. So, in France, was Eric Rouleau a representative of a typical state of the uh, French uh, leftists uh, and the relation to the Arab world? And as a journalist, how uh, could his relations uh, with uh, succeed with the uh, leaders of the uh, uh, Arab countries? Uh, uh, did not contradict with their role as oppressors of the intellectuals in the Arab world. Thank you, Amira. There is a question from Lamia over here. Thank you. I didn't know Eric Rolo personally, but I knew a lot about Egypt through him, uh, through covering the movement of the students at the beginning of the 1970s, and I was a teenager living outside of Egypt at that time. His coverage of these incidents made me uh, believe in the importance of freedom in my country. And even the names that he uh, uh, used to say painted an image that I still uh, that I'm still reminded of till now, that when uh, the uh, uh, security troops uh, used to uh, throw gas canisters at the protesters and then they took them and threw them back at the uh, uh, police or at security troops. And I still remember this uh, scene very much. I, um, uh, I think uh, there is uh, Hani Shukralla, uh, who was uh, one of his friends, and uh, he he was the first to introduce him to me. Every single day, I used to wait for his articles about Egypt because uh, there was no live coverage at the time. So he was my live coverage. With the passage of almost 50 years, I still keep uh, parts of his articles, clippings of his articles with me, and I will n n never let them go because they represent uh, an image of Egypt that is still uh, uh, repeated up till now. And I saw these images repeated in 2011 during the revolution. Thank you. And and so we leave the speakers answering the set uh, of questions, and then we uh, will take another set of questions. Don't. Hal fi madrasa francey? Is there a French school in uh, in regards to Egypt's perspective? For example, like what Nabil Fahmi said, we were raised up t uh, on Eric Rouleau's uh, uh, th thought. And of course, there was the classic book about uh, the French classic book about Egypt that uh, uh, he represented. So <coughs> my question is, uh, did Eric Rouleau know Jean Le Couture? And what's the difference between the thoughts of both? Uh, can we just allow the speakers to uh, answer? OK. Mr. Lahdar, the floor is yours. Regarding the last question about the French school uh, or a French perspective uh, to uh, regarding Egypt, I believe that no journalist played an important role as much as Rouleau did. 
not because there is no journalist like Rouleau, but because there is no uh, a, a newspaper like Le Monde uh, Diplomatique. I mean, uh, there are many journalists now writing about everything in the world and writing on the internet as well. So the uh, weight of any journalist nowadays won't amount to Rouleau's. Also, I think that in France, there is a school of researchers on the Arab world, and it's a very good school. Uh, there are many people who speak uh, uh, Arabic and even Egyptian uh, uh, better than me, and maybe better than some of you, and they work on the ground. And I think that this is a huge uh, effort that could be found uh, uh, in many uh, places. And I think that this creates a certain point of view. Does this point of view has a, have a certain weight in the media? This is not definite, because the media nowadays, especially in the electronic era, uh, is only com uh, uh, is only compromised comprised of uh, two minutes where you have to say what happens from Palestine to China. Uh, one, in the war of 1991, there was a very famous uh, uh, program where Jack Berg uh, was hosted, and he was one of Rolo's generations, and he knew Quran and 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 and, and every and many things. And he was told, uh, in 30 seconds, tell me, is the Quran with, with the West or against it? So this problematic issue of the media creates lots of problems. But this is, does not concern only the Middle East. Uh, of course, there, is some, there are difficult issues with the Middle East, but this is even applicable to uh, local or domestic issues. Um, what I believe is that if anyone has a certain discourse, uh, uh, the, for example, the head of a party, when he makes a one-hour speech, he focuses on one sentence because he knows this is what the media is going to focus on. So how can we have a, a, a true discussion with, these, with this context? Regarding Eric Krolo's vision on the liberation and freedom and so on. As I said, when he came to Egypt for the first time, when he returned to Egypt for the first time in 1963, he asked Nasser a very important question about the socialists in prisons. And Abdel Nasser said, we are going to um, all uh, political uh, or communist uh, political prisoners, we're going to set them free. So when we look at the history of the Arab world from the 70s up till today, we'll find that at that time, the main issue, the main cause was national liberation and what happened after the 1967 war. So the issue of democracy um, um, I don't. I don't want to use this word, but maybe we can use uh, 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 the right to expression, uh, the right to criticize. Uh, this wasn't the main cause at that time. This wasn't the main issue at the time, but this has changed today because after the. Uh, period, uh, the 50-year period uh, through which the Arab world has gone through, it, it's obvious that the way forward must include a confession uh, uh, of the uh, 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 of its two tenants, uh, the Palestinian cause and the cause of human rights and the multi-partisan issue and the role of uh, the public in general. So is there any possibility to have some sort of new balance between the Arab world, the West, the US, and Israel without having a strong internal front that is based on uh, multiculturalism and human rights or not? Of course, you all know that this is a very uh, long uh, debate that goes a long way back. Uh, 
But I think that Eric understood this quite well. Even throughout uh, the times where he used to write in, in the 80s, for example, his main cause that he wrote about was the liberation, not the issue of democracy. Uh, the questions are very important. Uh, the questions that you raised are very important. There is a French, a European, and an American school of thought. And it comprises lots of people, and they are important people as well. Of course, they, there they are confronted, especially in regards to the Palestinian cause, with a huge lobby that is organized, that is successful. So up till this moment, people be still believe that in 1967, Israel miraculously made it out of the Egyptian aggression, though this is not true. So there is a, a huge lack of efforts on part of the Arabs. This was the case in the past, and it's still the case today, maybe even more. I mean, uh, uh, you have uh, some youth, some American youth, some European youth uh, who stand side to side with the Israeli youth. And they were the ones uh, uh, to, a, to enable the Palestinian farmers to uh, take their olives from the trees. So, the Naif Hawatma, as now it, Naif Hawatma said, that there was a lack of effort from the uh, Arab parts. I think he was not mistaken. He was right, completely right. Also, there is a lack of ability from uh, using or utilizing our friendships uh, in the West. And the fact is that our friends in the West now are less than they were in the past. And this is because of our circumstances and because of our lack of efforts. So I hope that our youth would read this book and uh, maybe they would realize what uh, is needed from them in order to change our reality. Thank you. <clears throat> In order for us to understand the uh, uh, situation in Europe now, uh, we have to know that there is something that happened in the world 10 or 15 years ago, in Palestine and in the Arab world in general. In Europe, there is a huge Islamophobic movement, and they translate everything that happens in the region as a conflict between the West and Islam, especially that the only change that happened in Palestine since the Second Intifada, uh, um, it's interpreted as what happened, what happened is not a conflict between Palestinians and Israelis, it's just a conflict between uh, Islam and the West, and Israel is part of the West. And of course, this has a negative effect on solidarity with the uh, Palestinian cause. Unfortunately, time is flying, so, uh, so maybe it's a bit frustrating for those who had questions, but I invite you to, we have refreshment, and Mr. Uh, Lahda Brahimi is very willing to sit and do some book signature, uh, just for a few minutes, if you want. Uh, so uh, I really thank everybody, I mean all, I mean ambassadors, institutions, make this event possible, so please, uh, we have a refreshment on outside, and uh, thank you again. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs>